But no, someone I wanted to speak to you, um, to you about Salim personally was uh, Mohamed Salasu. So did you watch the Man City versus Southampton game on Saturday night? No, I missed it, to be fair. Ah, okay. So basically, the Man City attack against a uh, Southampton team who, who took the lead quite early. I think it was yeah, I understand what happened in the game that Southampton went 1 0 and sort of City equalised, but I, I don't have any sort of detail of the game in that sense. I just, just know the score and what happened, and that was it. It was, it was kind of a mature performance from Southampton, from Ralph Hasenhutl's team. It was more, they kept control of the ball, they kept it more on the floor, and they, they almost tried to beat City at their own game because it wasn't just have the ball lump it off the wait for another. Um, attack to come by like a lot of these teams were doing. They, they played up from the back properly. They they did pretty well in, in their wing players, but always trying to take on their full back and take on their man. And always trying to... Um, they were going in for proper second balls and everything. And it's quite nice to see a Southampton side do that this season as well. I mean, they tend to do that anyway, but against a big team, they actually did that very well, which is pretty good. And I just wanted to shout out Mohamed Salisu. Um, he was a player who could have gone to the African Cup of Nations with Ghana. Uh, but he decided otherwise and he stayed with Southampton uh, in the Premier League as well. And ever since uh, Vestergaard left last season, or the beginning of this season, I should say, uh, for Leicester, he's been a, he's been a stalwart in that, in that centre-back position as well. And just a couple of facts on uh, his performance against Man City. He's got 14 clearances, three shots that he blocked, two aerial duels, uh, four interceptions, seven ground duels won, and seven tackles as well. And I think that mo- mostly I, I noticed him because of the clearances that he had. It was the fact yes. that he could actually clear it and he could actually find a man. He could find a Nathan Redmond or he could find a, a Stuart Armstrong as well. And it worked really well in, in Southampton's favour as well. And I just wanted to know, Salah, from your um, thoughts on Mohamed Salasu, if you have any, um, is this the beginning of another talented Southampton player um, on their books that they could end up selling for a big profit? What do you think? Um, potentially, I was going to say I'm surprised it didn't go to the Afcon. Like it's been, you know, it's looked like quite a decent tournament so far, and it's you know been vibes if anything. So that's that's the first surprise I'd say. Definitely. But, yeah, I mean that's the thing with Southampton. The model is sort of the selling club kind of model. No disrespect to them, but it, we'll just have to. Um, yeah, we'll just have to see. I guess. Yeah, we just have to see how it goes. Because realistically speaking, as, as I'm looking at it now, uh, Mohamed Salasu, um, he could end up being another 40, 50 million pound player from um, Southampton to leave as well. And it's going to be good to see how um, how Southampton do for the rest of the season as well. I've, I've always liked Ralph Hassan as well, but it's just one of those things that I want to see more from the Southampton side because when you have such a good ma- uh, manager like that, um, the Austrians really take into South- to Southampton and... I know they've held a couple of nine ones in the past, but it'll be good to see how, how further they do down the line as well and the rest of the season as well.